in one of our previous videos, we already talked about how a potential collaboration between SpaceX and the Boeing company would look like on the Moon and on Mars. But of course, we know that Elon has other interesting companies which could pose a lot of fruitful synergies for future space colonization. And of course, Tesla is together with SpaceX, Elon's biggest and most successful company. So then, what could Tesla actually do on the Moon or Mars? What technologies could it provide? And how would those synergies work? Well, I would say, let's find out. Of course, we know that Tesla produces cars, right? That's an easy one. In fact, many people actually make the mistake to think that Tesla is only a car manufacturer. Well, you of course know that Tesla is so much more than that. For example, Tesla also produces solar cells at the Giga factory in Buffalo, New York. It's also implicitly clear that Tesla produces batteries because they only build electric cars. Moreover, Tesla is also starting to build more and more large battery storage systems for renewable energy power plants, such as the one at the Honesdale Wind Farm in Australia, where they have a 194 megawatt hour battery installed to even off the surplus electricity during peak hours and store it for later use. Of course, you know that Tesla also offers software machine learning for full self-driving, and even car insurance. But which of these ventures could be utilized on our future colonies on the Moon and on Mars? Well, let's find out! Number 1. Tesla Solar Cells Let's start with Tesla's solar cells. We know that solar power will play a very big role both on the Moon and on Mars. On the Moon, humanity's first lunar base will be built at Shackleton Crater at the lunar south pole. Why? Because there's a lot of water ice down in the crater, which we need for the base, but equally as importantly, there is eternal sunshine. That's right, the sun is directly on the horizon line there, and it is actually never setting. If we would build the Moon base near the Moon equator, the base would see 14 Earth days of continuous sunlight and 14 Earth days of continuous total darkness, which of course is not ideal. Thus, solar power at Shackleton Crater would be very ideal. The solar energy flux per surface area on the Moon varies from 1310 to 1416 watts per square meter. Of course, this value is lower on Earth due to the atmosphere, so actually we could utilize more solar power on the Moon than on Earth. Thus, Tesla solar panels would come in very handy on the Moon. We saw that the Moon version of Starship has solar panels attached to its nose, and we are pretty sure that these will be Tesla solar panels. The solar panels will also be mounted on top of high towers to catch as much sunlight as possible from the very low sun. Now on Mars, the situation is vastly different. Mars is on average 40% further away from the Sun than the Earth-Moon system. This means that the solar flux per surface area, which is also called solar irradiance, is only 590 watts per square meter on average on the surface of Mars, which is less than half that of the Moon. On Mars, we have a day-night cycle that is very similar to Earth. This means that half of a Martian day, the solar panels would be in darkness. Also, we have a thin atmosphere on Mars, which contains lots of dust particles, so the solar panels would constantly need it to be cleaned. Then there are even large dust storms, which can last for weeks, nay, even months. During this time, the solar panels would be quite useless. All these things mean that on Mars, we would need much larger solar arrays containing many more Tesla solar panels. But to make the solar panels work effectively on Mars, we would of course need... 2. Tesla battery storage On Earth already, we need buffer storage to account for the overproduction of wind and solar farms 
during peak hours. A battery storage system stores the surplus electricity for release at a later time. On Mars, of course, we would have to do the same. And before we continue, please consider subscribing to our channel. Because first, it's completely free. And second, you would tremendously help us to continue talking about such fascinating topics. The solar farms on Mars would utilize Tesla's battery storage systems to save the surplus energy collected during a Martian day for release during the night. Of course, batteries would also be needed to provide energy during sandstorm events, where the solar panels cannot yield any electricity. By the way, we should add that on the Moon, but even more on Mars, we certainly would need radio thermal electric power generators in addition to solar cells. Only solar cells alone won't suffice for the energy needs of a colony. This means we would need additional power generation from space-grade small nuclear reactors, such as NASA's Kilo Power, which as the name suggests, could provide electricity up to 10 kilowatts. So one such nuclear generator could provide as much power as 17 square meters of solar panels on Mars, and as much as 7 to 7.5 seven square meters of solar panels on the Moon. Of course, we would need many of those nuclear reactors. And more than 10 kilowatts of power certainly also wouldn't be too bad. But back to the Tesla batteries. Of course, these batteries wouldn't be standard Tesla battery systems. Temperature variations on Mars are much higher than on Earth, let alone on the Moon. On Mars, the temperature can vary from plus 30 degrees Celsius during the hottest days near the equator but they can also drop as low as minus 125 degrees Celsius during a winter night. Typically, from a regular day to night, we would see a temperature variation of 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. So take the Erebus Montes site, where SpaceX will probably build the first Mars base. Temperature will vary from around 0 degrees Celsius during the day to around minus 70 degrees Celsius during the night, on a regular Martian summer day. This is of course quite a brutal temperature variation. On Mars, we have a thin atmosphere which still somewhat moderates the wild temperature swings. But the Moon is for all intents and purposes devoid of an atmosphere or has such a thin atmosphere that we can really call it a vacuum. Thus, the temperature variations between sunlight and darkness are more than 200 degrees Celsius on the Moon which is really crazy. From 121 degrees Celsius in direct sunlight down to minus 157 degrees Celsius in the eternal darkness of Shackleton Crater. This means that Tesla battery storage systems would need to have a really good insulation and also a really good thermal management system. They would need to be cooled in direct sunlight and would need to be warmed in darkness. That's why it would be really good to place them somewhere on the lunar surface where they have as little variation from sun to shadow as possible, if built on the outside. Of course, they could also be built sheltered below ground in a temperature controlled environment or even be incorporated into the future lunar base where of course the temperature will be always constantly kept at around 20 degrees Celsius for a good human habitation environment. On Mars, of course, this would also apply to a certain extent. Even on Mars with the lower temperature fluctuations, the Tesla batteries couldn't just be left outside without any temperature management system and insulation. Here too, they would probably be put into a temperature controlled shelter or incorporated into the base. So besides storage batteries and power generation, what else would Tesla deliver on the Moon and Mars? Three. Tesla rovers. This is of course the most obvious one, right? I mean, Tesla produces cars. And only last year, they announced the amazing Cybertruck, which looks so outlandish that many people instantly said that this was actually built as a rover for the Moon or Mars. And indeed, the Cybertruck could serve as the perfect off-world colony rover. However, some modifications are required. 
We cannot just take the Earth's version of Cybertruck and use it one to one for the Moon or Mars. Doors, for example, are not a good idea off world. The pressure difference is so large that you would constantly lose inside pressure. Also, you cannot just open and close the door because you would need to pressurize the inside. Thus, you would lose the inside atmosphere. Now, of course, you might say, hey, the interior of the rover doesn't need to be pressurized at all. The astronauts could just leave on their spacesuits. Yeah, sure, but then we could just have an open rover like the Apollo moon rover from the start, which would totally defeat the purpose of having a closed truck. So the moon or Mars rover version of Cybertruck most likely wouldn't look like this really cool render here. Although it's correct that the Cybertruck would need larger tires on the moon, because on both the moon and Mars, there are quite large stones lying around. So the tires would really need to be as large as possible to accommodate for this. This render here by Solteris G5 is quite realistic, because the two spacesuits in the back would most likely be the way how you enter and exit Cybertruck. You would enter the spacesuit directly from Cybertruck, explore the outside, and then dock the spacesuit again and get inside. But here, the tires appear a bit too small, and we are not sure if the hatch on the side is a pressure hatch, but it better should be one. We think that very likely, Tesla will build a special version of Cybertruck for the Moon and for Mars. The rover version would be larger than the current Cybertruck, having docking for spacesuits in the aft section, and a pressure hatch, or both, and larger tires. The rover would likely also have solar panels on the roof, maybe even drag solar panels behind it, like in the Martian. So the Cybertruck rover would probably more likely resemble this Mars rover concept by NASA. However, you can be very sure that it will be built entirely by Tesla and shipped to the Moon and Mars with Starship. So as you see, Tesla will form a perfect synergy with SpaceX on our future colonies for the Moon and for Mars. And most likely, there would be even more amazing synergies which we could not even imagine yet. And maybe Tesla couldn't only help us to colonize the Moon and Mars, but also maybe Titan. And if you are more interested in Titan, you can watch this video here. So thanks for watching the JI Space Report. And I would say, on to the future. And yes, Monday Space Report. Yeah. What do we say? Okay.